Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about dragging and dropping views in your Android app and we will have two layouts and be able to drag a view from the first layout into the second layout where it will stick to. We will start by creating our layout. I will replace this constraint layout with a linear layout, change its orientation to vertical and Inside of this linear layout, I will add two more linear layouts. These will be the linear layouts where we will be able to um, drop our view. So first create a linear layout here, match parent and match parent is fine. I will give it an ID of LL top for the top linear layout. Set the orientation to horizontal. It doesn't actually matter what we choose here. Set um, the background color to Android color green dark, for example, to just give it um, a color so we are able to differentiate between our two layouts. I will set the gravity to center to make sure that the views inside this layout are actually centered. And I will set the layout weight to one because we want our two layouts to have the exact same height to fill 50% of our screen. Then we can open that tag and copy that layout, paste it below, rename it to LL bottom. Here we can make that tag shorter. And inside of our first layout, we want to add the view that we will be able to drag. So I will just create a simple view here set the layout width to 100 dp and the height to i will give it an id of drag view and set its background color to android black and make sure to set the layout gravity to center so it is actually centered in our layout now we can go into our main activity and in here we want to create an on long click listener and attach it to our drag view. So drag view dot set on long click listener that will trigger when we hold onto this drag view. And in here we are going to create a clip data um, to show you how we can actually attach data to a dragged object. And maybe you're asking yourself um, why we need that? Why should we attach data to a dragged object? That can be useful in many different scenarios. Imagine you want to, to drag a file in your file explorer and you drop it into a folder. Then you somehow need to know where it came from to actually move it away from one folder into another. And that can be done by just attaching the path to it where it came from. So now we can create a clip data text, um, clip text, and set it to this is our clip data text and that will just be the text we will attach to our drag view and which will actually be our drag data. Um, afterwards we have to convert that clip text to a clip item. So val item is equal to clip data dot item and put the clip text in the constructor and make sure to import clip data. Then we have to create MIME types. If you don't know what MIME types are, you can think of them as file endings or what kind of data we want to put into this clip data. In this case, it will just be plain text. So we can write well MIME types and we have to create them as an array because we could attach several MIME types to our clip data. However, in our case, we will just put um, plain text in there. So MIME types is equal to array of clip description dot mime type text plane. And finally, after that, we can create our clip data that we will actually append to our drag view. So val data is equal to clip data, pass our clip text, pass our mime types, and pass our item. Then we can create what is called a drag shadow builder that is just used to give our view a shadow so we actually get visual feedback that we are currently dragging it. We do that by writing val drag shadow builder and set that to view dot drag shadow builder. And in the constructor of that, make sure to import view here. In the constructor of drag shadow builder, we 
simply need to put the view you want to attach it to, and that is just it here, so our drag view. And after that, we can start our drag and drop by writing it.start drag and drop. Here we can attach our clip data we just created above. We can attach our drag shadow builder, so our drag shadow builder as a local state, so the object we will actually drag, that is just it. And we don't want to attach any flags, so just pass zero here. And if you get that error that I'm getting here, um, that start drag and drop function requires API level 24, and I have currently um, minimum API level 16, we can easily change that by going into our build.gradle app file and change that min SDK version to 24. Click on sync now, wait for Gradle to end its sync, then we can go back in main activity and afterwards the error should begin as it is here. And finally, because now we started our drag, we want to make our view invisible so it is not visible anymore in the layout where it came from and is only visible through the drag shadow. So it.visibility is equal to view.invisible. And finally, we need to return true in this function by just writing true because this is a lambda function. We don't write return true. Instead, we just write true. So the last line of this lambda function will be returned. In the next step, we need to create what is called a drag listener that we will attach to our two layouts to be able to respond to different drag events. We do it by writing val drag listener and set it to view dot on drag listener. Use that lambda function here. View and I would call this just event. That's fine. And in here we want to use a when expression to respond to those different events when event um, dot action. So depending on which action it is, the first event we want to respond to is drag event dot action drag started. In that case, we just want to return whether our, our drag object is able to accept our drag data. And we can do this by writing event dot clip description dot has mime type clip description dot mime text mime type text plain. So that will either return true or false um, exactly as our drag listener function will do and in case it can accept the data it will return true and in case it cannot then it will return false and the drag won't even be continued. The next drag event is drag event dot drag entered which is called when our drag view enters the layout's boundaries. So in this case, we just want to update our layout view by, uh, by writing view dot invalidate and returning true afterwards. Then we have a drag event that we don't want to use here. We still have to um, use it in our event expression, which is action drag location but we want to just ignore this. This is not important for us. So just return true here. The next event is drag event action drag exited. In this case, um, it's actually the same as we had it for the action drag entered. This event occurs when the, the drag view leaves our layout's boundaries. So every time this, this view here is our account layout, so either um, when the view enters this layout or when it leaves this layout, we still want to update it by writing view.invalidate and returning true afterwards. And now the interesting part starts, which is actually when we drop our drag view, drag event.action drop. Um, in this case, we first want to get our clip data that we attach to our drag view. So we write val item and set it to event dot clip data dot get item at zero. So just the first item because we only have one in there. 
After that, we can get the text, so the drag data from our item.text and simply display a toast to show that we actually got the data successfully. Um, pass this as context and just use the direct data here and write toast.length short. Call the show on it. And we also want to remove the view from the layout it was in before and add it into the new layout. And we can get the direct object to our direct view by writing val v is equal to event dot local state and convert it to a view so that v will just be our direct view here but it could be anything so it's better to write it as event dot local state um, and then we want to get the owner layout so the layout where our view was in before which is v dot parent um, well owner is equal to v dot parent and convert that to a view group because it's a layout. Then we want to remove that view from our owner layout. So owner dot remove view v. Then we take our um, layout that was where where the direct item was dropped in, which is this view here. And in this layout, we want to add our direct view now. So val destination is equal to view as linear layout destination dot add view v and finally we want to um, turn the the visibility of our direct view back to visible um, v dot visibility is equal to view dot visible because now our direct view is back into a layout and we want to see it again. We turn true after that and now we have one final more drag event we need to handle which is drag event dot action drag ended but that's not, not really complicated it's just what we already had before we want to invalidate our view view dot invalidate and we turn true and then we can simply write the else block in our um, when expression and return false in this case. Then I actually noticed that I forgot to invalidate our view in between um, we get our drag data and we re remove that view from the from the initial layout. So just call view dot invalidate here. Then we can scroll up and add that direct listener to our two layouts. So ll top dot um, set on drag listener to drag listener we created below. Press Ctrl D to duplicate that line and change it to LL bottom. And I think I forgot to change the yeah the 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 color of our second layout. So our two layouts don't have different colors to differentiate between them. So I will just remove this and set it to hollow blue light. If you've done that, then we can simply run our app. And as you can see, we have two different layouts: one green layout and one blue layout and our black box that is our drag view if we hold on to it then we are able to drag it you can see that drag shadow that it gets a little bit transparent and if we drop it into our second layout then it stays there the toast shows up with this is our clip data text and we can drag it back into our top layout and the clip data text will show up again so i hope this video was helpful for you if so please leave a like and comment below. Also, if there is anything I can improve on, please let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful for me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.